Welcome to Your Family's Health, the program that focuses on health care issues with unique and different modalities for taking charge of your health today. Experts talk weekly with our continuing roster of guests from around the country and right here in Nassau County to keep you up to date on the latest health issues and trends. Take care of your mind, body, and soul. Spend the next half hour with the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC, and get on the journey to better health. I hope you're having a good day. Hi, I'm Dr. Janine cook Garrard from the nursing department here at Nassau Community College, and I'm here with our special guest, Edie Nathan. Good afternoon, Edie. Good afternoon, Janine. Edie, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Certainly. I actually have a practice here in Nassau County and also in New York City. I'm a psychotherapist, and what I work with is grief. The idea of grief is actually more than just dealing with the loss of a loved one. It includes any losses that we've incurred in our lives. I am an ASECT certified sex therapist and a licensed psychotherapist, an EMDR practitioner, which means that I work a lot with trauma. It's a, it's a way of helping people work, work on trauma. I also do hypnotherapy, guided imagery, psychodrama, and role play because it seems that it's really important to have a lot of tools in one's toolbox when dealing with loss, grief, and trauma. I recently finished a book called It's Grief, The Dance of Self-Discovery Through Trauma and Loss, and it's a conversation that I am looking forward to having with you, Janine. So, Edie, this is a wonderful book, and I'm looking at this book, and uh, for those in the listening audience, you don't have the joy of looking at just this cover, but if I can describe it, it's like a small person taking a leap of faith, or I describe it as a leap of faith, into a large hand. Um, tell me, what what led you to have this type of illustration for this book? Oftentimes, to take the journey of learning about your grief, of understanding how it shows up, we grieve so many different things. Yes, the loss of a loved one, sometimes the role of caretaker, the loss of a of a wife who's got Alzheimer's but is still alive but not alive. And it takes a leap of faith to enter into this journey. And the hand is a hand of your hand welcoming your journey, but it could also be the hand that you reach out to, that you hope to put your trust into as you encapsulate what you need to learn as you are on this journey of grief, loss, and trauma. So when you talk about grief, Edie, um, I'm thinking, and I frame grief in the loss of a loved one, but you don't necessarily have to frame it that way. It could be the loss of a person or a thing or a loss in a situation Am I correct in saying that? You're absolutely correct, Janine. We have a lot that's going on in our nation right now. Uh, we can look at the flooding that is going on in Florence mm -hmm. and the people who are devastated, whose homes have been completely wrecked. They don't have any homes to go back to. People have died. So there are multiple layers of losses that are certainly uh, occurring. And also what's going on in Florence, and there's tremendous grief, is there, there are people who live in pretty devastating poverty. And that poverty is now being further enhanced because of these floods. So whatever help they might have been getting prior to the flood and the flooding um, is is maybe harder to get at this point. Um, so there are people who are, are, are really grieving on so many, so many different levels. So, you know, when we think of grief, I want to expand this conversation. I want to take it out of the closet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got people in the LGBTQ community who have been in hiding some of them for so long and now 
they're starting to come out and this grief conversation can come out right along with them. So uh, it's, it's, it shows up in ways that we can't even imagine. So if someone were to come, and I know that you, you write a blog, you write a book, um, do you also provide therapy for individuals who may be experiencing grief? I do. Mm-hmm. I experience individual therapy in Nassau County, Port Washington, and also in New York City. The bigger steps that I, I like people to take, uh, the individual therapy is fantastic. Uh, group work is even better. And I also offer intensives because I think that sometimes working, you know, for two solid days on on grief, on one aspect of grief, for example, anger or anxiety or fear or just being stuck in what I call the first phase, which is the emotional armor phase of denial and numbness to help you break out of that. Sometimes doing more intensive work can be so helpful. Mm -hmm. So yes, I do the individual and groups. And then I also really support people in uh, looking into the intensives. So when a person comes to you or wants uh, to figure out what, what is wrong, do they know to use the word grief or do does the work uh, include getting to a place where we can say that it is grieving that I'm feeling? How does that go? Great question. Most people don't identify what's going on with them as grief unless it's like right in front of their faces. You know, my dad died, my mom died, grandparent died, aunt, uncle, child. That's grief and we can certainly identify it. Sometimes we don't have those identifiers and anxiety, if you track someone's anxiety and why they started to feel anxiety, we might be able to track it to a trauma, sexual trauma, bullying, uh, the loss of a limb. And so we track it all the way back to something that happened to them physically, emotionally, that may not be the loss of a loved one. And in tr- in so tracking them, we we realize, my God, there was grief that started mm-hmm. there, and once that can be identified, that opens an entire conversation that they had not been having. Mm-hmm. And so often, you know, medication is given to quell the anxiety. I understand that, but having a conversation that is deeper, let's talk about mm-hmm. grief and what is causing you this anxiety. Uh, actually is far more relieving. And they often have, my clients will often have what I call these eureka moments. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I didn't know. And, and in that eureka moment, there's an enlightenment. There's a, they are illuminated in ways that they never thought that they would be around this. So this is a real work, grief work, where we're talking about where the individual has to face that, okay, I am grieving and now how can I rid myself, if you will, and let it go, all of the feelings that are surrounding the loss. That's right. And um, the ways that you approach therapy would be what? Do you have them discuss or is this, tell me about your therapy and what does that include? I really try to include body, mind, and soul. There might be music in my session. And we might just sit there and listen to music and ask for feedback on what's going on in terms of the body and the mind with 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 this music. Uh, I might work with clay. I might do role play or psychodrama. The work is getting to know the self. When you get to know the self, you can actually start to heal yourself. So are you more of an extrovert Or are you an introvert? Are you an ambivert? A little bit of both. Because if you are an introvert, you might not want to go to a group. You might not want to go to an intensive. You actually might want to just do some one-on-one work or speak to one or two close family members or friends. If you are an extrovert, a group might be the perfect climate for you Mm -hmm. to work through some some of your grief. So really assessing who you are and how you handle emotion. Do you handle it in an over-distanced way. And what I mean by that is that you're kind of like numb or are you under-distanced, you're hyper-emotional. Because the goal is for you to get to balance.
balance. Mm -hmm. And that balance shifts. You're like on a seesaw, and there's still movement in the middle of that seesaw, but you're neither up, completely up, or completely down. So this process, this grief work, as you, as you, as you called it, named it, which is perfect, is, is, is really a work of the self. And when you get to know the self, you get to know the best way to help the self. You're listening to Your Family's Health on the voice of NASA Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Dr. Janine cook and today our guest is Edie Nathan. We also are here with Shannon O'Shea, who is a nursing student first semester here at NASA Community College. Shannon, did you have a question for Edie? Um, yes, I did. Um, I just had a question regarding um, grief. Is there like a timeline at all? There is no timeline. I would never tell anyone you're doing it in the wrong time. And often we get stuck in that. There are friends and family members who who might say to your lo- to to your surviving loved one or to you, you know, you're not doing it fast enough. It's three months. It's six months. And you know what? No one has a right to tell you how long you're going to be grieving. If you've lost someone, I, I actually don't believe that we, we end grief. We don't end the relationship we, with grief. We learn to dance with it. We learn to integrate it. And it has less power and potency over us, so it doesn't have that grip on us. You know, the, <laughs> I, call, I call it grief's grip. We want to lighten the grip, for sure. We want you to have a life. But this is not about forgetting. Mm-hmm. This is about how you're going to dance with it, how you're going to move with it. And that, that's actually part of the reason I, I put in the title The Dance of Self-Discovery because it is a dance. It is a movement. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it is the, the music of the soul. So when you this is this is so interesting and I uh, am a nurse practitioner and I work in the, in the hospital and a lot of times what I do see is a physiological manifestation of grief it coming through in a lot of different illnesses and it can be grief coming through a shortness of breath that that person has lost and now they're experiencing a, a, a depression or it can be either some other kind of chronic illness just because they had a loss and they experienced such grief and trauma from the loss. Have you seen this? Yes, and, and to your point, and it's, it's such an important point because the body is, is a holder of our grief and of loss and of trauma. Uh, what we know And I don't want to be stepping on your toes in terms of your medical knowledge, you know. Um, But in terms of uh, men and women who suffer RA, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, who suffer um, diseases of immunity, we can actually track back to um, sexual, um, having been sexually abused. And we can track it. um, I'm not going to put a number on it, but it's very potent. Mm -hmm. It's it's it's. It's there and it's alive. And these men and women, and we see it more in women, um, but uh, for both men and women, these diseases of immunity, they are, they are struggling, struggling with trying to figure out how to, how to deal with the pain. And so much of the pain is often related to a grief that has never been spoken of. Mm-hmm. And they are actually now having a conversation around letting that go, letting that r- release. And I have seen w- many of my clients, they're holding on to issues around the jaw and the teeth and the throat where it's hard for them to even speak. And through this work, through psychodrama, through knowing the self, through actually a conversation around the archetypes, which we can certainly talk about, the archetypes are are amazing ways uh, to to talk about uh, difficult topics Mm -hmm. and project onto those archetypes like the good mother or the cheerleader or the judge or the critic. And they stop us or the abuser, they stop us and from from having a voice. And when we can help someone who, for example, has been sexually abused and who is also grieving and they identify the grief as such, then they begin to have a voice and some of the symptoms get relieved, not not wiped out, Mm -hmm. not eradicated, Mm -hmm. but there is a relief and they have a better understanding. 
So as um, grief work, can it be a lifelong thing? I believe it is. And so when you talk about the dance, and I like the way you use that word, when you see someone that has just experienced a loss, it could be a loved one.